everyone knows that our nation is filled with video gamers. Not everyone has decided what they think about that. Logical people realize that video games don't affect how violent normal people are. This has been proven countless times by dozens of studies, reviews, and scientific facts. Many people believe that violent video games make people more likely to kill someone based on some assumption that since a handful of mentally ill people play video games and a handful of mentally ill people murder others, video games must drive people to murder others. But such uninformed assumptions have no proven facts behind them. In fact, many critics of violent video games have never even touched the very video games they speak of, making many of their statements invalid because they have no experience with the games. If a book critic had never read a book, their review wouldn't be accurate. If a movie critic had never seen a movie, their, their review wouldn't be reliable. But in video games, many critics have never played the games, yet still claim that they know the truth. Violent video games are bad. But they have so little experience. Can this really be the truth? Another tactic opponents of violent video games use, like writers such as Ben Carey, author of Shooting in the Dark, an article in the New York Times, they try to sway those on edge by peppering their writing with strong, loaded words like hair trigger rage and dismissive brutality that can lead to people visualizing horrible monsters being created by video games, but are really just empty words written to stir up readers. In order to judge if violent video games are bad, we first must step away from the biased, unreliable information we have been given and take a look at the facts. Many trusted sources have studied whether video games are bad or not, and all have to come to the conclusion that, put simply, violent video games don't cause violence. According to the Entertainment Software Association, the U.S. Supreme Court, the U.S. Surgeon General, the Federal Trade Commission, and the Federal Communications Commission have all examined the scientific record and found that it does not establish any causal link between violent programming and violent behavior. Those are four of the most trusted groups of people in the United States, assuring you that violent video games don't cause violent behavior. We can also use our common sense to see this for ourselves. If violent video games cause violent behavior, the world would be overrun with murdering lunatics. Your next door neighbor, your classmates, storekeepers, bankers, congressmen, all would be violent crime committers because chances are they play video games too. A look around can prove to you that video games do not cause violence. In fact, data shows that violent video games may even reduce violence and crimes. This graph from the Entertainment Software Association displays very clearly that as crime rates have gone down, video game sales have gone up. Economists like Steve Levitt attribute this to the fact that, well, that violent people are drawn to violent video games. As more of the people that would be inclined to commit crimes spend their time playing video games instead, they aren't on the streets committing these crimes, and so, as video game sales have gone up, crime rates have gone down. It's true that there is an overwhelming amount of violence in America. In fact, each day in this country, on average, 30 people are murdered with a gun, 162 more are injured, and 53 use a gun to commit suicide, according to the CDC. That, that's a lot. Many ordinary people think that this is because of violent video games, saying that they negatively influence both children and adults, driving them to kill and injure themselves and others. But scientific data says otherwise. In fact, a study by the Washington Post reveals that there is no statistical correlation between video game consumption and gun-related deaths. In some extreme cases, violent video games can affect children and adults, but they are not harmful in general. While it is true that some murderers, such as the Columbine High School shooters Eric Harris and Dylan Klebold, and the Sandy Cook shooter Adam Lanza, are described as having been addicted to video games, studies show that a variety of things lead to violence and aggression besides video games. None of these extreme acts occurs because of only one risk factor. There are many factors, including feeling socially isolated, bullied, and so on, says Craig A. Anderson, a psychologist at Iowa State University. While violent video games may have played a small part in these shootings, there were other factors as well, and violent video games aren't going to make our nation one of violence and crime. I used to believe that violent video games were bad, like many people in America. I know that unreliable information can make it hard to tell whether video games are bad or not, but it is evident through scientific research and common sense that violent video games do not cause violence. 
While in some extreme cases, violent video games may play a tiny part, it is proven that there are many other factors that influence a person's violence. Violent video games do not cause normal people to become more violent.